guys. And today I'm going to be looking at Apple and particularly the move and transition towards services and subscriptions and ultimately Apple's pursuit of a trillion dollars in sales. Tim Cook's mantra is to put Apple at, in quotes, the intersection of hardware, software and services. He said it not once but twice on the company's last earnings call, a sure sign that it's a statement that means something. It's a unique glue that holds Apple and its customers together. There is nothing else like it. But then again, Apple is unlike any other company in the tech economy. Now, at the heart of Apple's proposition is the iPhone, the most successful consumer product in history. It's a luxury item in the hands of over a billion people that signals both status and wealth. Now, Apple shipped 236 million iPhones and 58 million iPads in 2021 alone. If you piled all these on top of each other, they would stand over 1,400 miles high, which is over 250 times the height of Mount Everest. Now, when Steve Jobs first announced the iPhone in 2007, he called it, and I quote, a touchscreen iPod, a phone, and an internet communicator. Nowadays, the iPhone is a voice-activated lifestyle command center, as well as being still a phone. The iPhone and its iOS operating system seamlessly connect a personal network of internet devices. Now, the origins of the hardware, software, and services strategy can be traced back to 2017 and the launch of the iPhone X. This marked the beginning of a transition from hardware being Apple's primary sales engine, from a business model of transactions to recurring monthly subscriptions. Apple launched the iPhone X with a $1,000 starting price. Now, at the time, this was a leap for Apple customers who had been used to paying a few hundred dollars less for earlier versions of the iPhone. It also changed the dynamic of buying an iPhone, as owners were now keeping their iPhones for longer periods of time between replacing or upgrading them. Up until this point, Apple's sales strategy had been to entice customers to want the very latest model. But that meant each new iPhone iteration had to be much better than the previous one to keep the demand curve high. It meant a never ending demand for even more new features and functions. By uplifting the price point for the iPhone, the consequence would be fewer models sold, although each carried a substantially higher margin, which is around 60%. Now, just to put that in perspective, the iPhone 13 costs around $400 to make and sells for about $1,100. Now, to compensate for the potential for lower top line sales as consumers kept their iPhones for longer, Apple began a strategy to expand into services. The goal was to develop a recurring revenue stream to more than replace the transaction-based reliance on a hardware strategy, and the strategy has worked. In 2017, the year the iPhone X launched, Apple reported around $32 billion in services sales. Just four years later, by 2021, services revenues had more than doubled to over $68 billion and now accounts for almost $1 in every five that Apple earns. The key to Apple's growth in services has been the focus on recurring revenues, aka monthly subscriptions. From 2017 onwards, Apple's services business has created new Apple offerings to generate consistent month-on-month sales income. The point is that in the hardware model, sales are transactional and seasonal. Sales peak at Christmas or when a new model is launched and they dip in the January or just before a new release, whereas subscription services generate steady, reliable and consistent incomes all of the time. They also mean that new products and offerings can be upsold with minimal sales effort. The incremental cost of adding additional services into a user's subscription is negligible. The extra dollar or two in revenue flows straight to the bottom line. Better still, there's plenty of room for more growth, creating the ultimate subscription product. Imagine paying one monthly fee to combine all of the services in the Apple One subscription with the iPhone upgrade program so that you will automatically send a new iPhone every 12 months or so. Because if you think about it, with all the new products and services that are anticipated, it is not beyond the realms of possibility that Apple will become the ultimate lifestyle subscription. All courtesy of Apple wrapped up in the brand values of trust, privacy, quality and status. But that doesn't mean the end of the road for hardware, far from it. 2021 was a quiet year for Apple products, with the exception of the impressive MacBook Pro. However, in 2022, that is expected to change with a slew of new hardware products and upgrades, including the Apple Watch Series 8, iPhone 14, a new iPad Pro, 
and the biggest MacBook Air redesign in the product history. But the centerpiece is rumoured to be the Mac, the its longest serving product. From 2011 to 2020, the Mac consistently generated between 21 and $28 billion in sales per year. However, in 2021, the Mac had its best year ever and booked a cool $35 billion in top line sales. That was even more than the iPad. Now, a critical success factor in Apple's computer business has been the complete overhaul of its manufacturing supply chain. It started in 2020 with the replacement of Intel chips in favor of Apple's own silicon chips. So what does this all mean? Quite simply, Apple has verticalized computer manufacturing and removed the critical reliance on Intel, which happens to be the world's largest chip manufacturer. What's it going to take to get to be a trillion dollar corporation? And I mean trillion dollars in terms of revenue, not market valuation. Now it's hard to think of any other company that would beat Apple to be the world's first trillion dollar company. If Tim Cook maintains Apple's current and historic rate of growth, which is around 7 or 8% a year, then the company will be generating around $650 billion in revenue by 2030. But that's before you take into account the revenue potential in brand new markets for Apple. Let's take a look at them. First, the metaverse. Now, Tim Cook has said that he sees the future as an augmented one, not a virtual one. As far back as 2016, Tim Cook has been saying that he sees augmented reality as being far bigger and more important than technologies like virtual reality. However, Apple will go first with a virtual reality headset that is being described as mixed reality because it will also have some AR features. But make no mistakes about it, it's a VR headset that's going to look like a brick on the front of your face. The headset is codenamed N301 and there's an accompanying uh, operating system codenamed Oak. Now, for me, a more interesting development will be Apple's AR glasses. These will work in sync with your iPhone, your iPad, and your watch. And Apple have already said that they will not follow Mark Zuckerberg's lead with the Facebook Ray-Ban glasses by putting a camera on the front of the glasses. Number two, cashless payments. Apple has the means, the wherewithal, and the brand to disintermediate in the consumer payment space. Now, you only have to look at China and the impact of big tech giants Alipay and WeChat to see the potential that faces Apple. These super apps enabled consumers to replace physical cash with a mobile app and create a cashless society. That could be Apple in the United States. Apple Pay is already accepted by over 90% of US retailers, and now Apple has announced Tap to Pay. This is a new feature using NFC technology that turns an iPhone into a credit card reader. Consumers can use an iPhone, Apple Watch, digital wallet or contactless credit card to make a payment. It's possible because in 2020, Apple acquired a startup called MobiWave. MobiWave developed technology that lets smartphones process payments with the tap of a credit card. Now, this is going to be bad news for the existing payment providers like Square, who have been installing specialist equipment in stores since 2009. Apple has just made all of that specialist equipment redundant. And for Apple, it will be as simple as rolling out the feature in the next iOS update and bingo, a billion iPhones turn into credit card readers. Number three, search. Search is the most powerful way to advertise in history. Google dominated the space and made $149 billion last year by selling ads next to search results. That's more money than all the TV, radio and print businesses in the world put together. Now, Apple is believed to be paid an estimated $15 billion a year from Google to be the default search engine on the iPhone. That's how much it is worth to Google to be in front of a billion more affluent eyeballs. This is not unfamiliar ground for Apple, who already combine ads with search results in the App Store. They know how to do this, and replacing Google with their own search engine is an obvious next move, given that Apple has made privacy a strategic differentiator. And remember, Apple's overarching strategy is to go vertical. Just as Apple replaced Intel with their own in-house designed and built computer chips, they could do the same with Google. Next, we have health. In 2019, Tim Cook said, Apple's greatest contribution to mankind, it will all be about health. Now for Apple Health, essentially read wearables, and in particular, the Apple Watch. The Series 7 will make an emergency call if you're knocked unconscious in a forest, will monitor your blood pressure and blood oxygen levels, and even let you take an ECG at any time, anywhere. 
On their last earnings call, Tim Cook said, we're still in the very early innings with our health work. In other words, there's more to come. The next generation AirPods are likely to double up as hearing aids, whilst the augmented reality capability in Apple glasses would enhance eyesight. Combine all of this with Apple Search wrapped in a Tim Cook privacy blanket and users could be asking Siri to answer their most private and intimate health questions. Last, but certainly not least, the Apple car. Now, thanks to Tesla, the automotive sector has been transformed from a low margin, pretty grubby manufacturing industry into a software one. And the appeal for Apple is attention. We spend a lot of time in our cars. We're a captive audience for Apple subscription services. The Apple car would be the ultimate example of integrated hardware, software and services. And the Apple self-driving electric vehicle is coming. Exactly when and how much and what it will look like are all unanswered questions. There's a lot of speculation, but little substance. From what I can see, 2024-25 is the current bet for the launch of Apple's entry into the auto space. But it's going to happen. Now, based on patent filings and some rumours and a lot of market speculation, the general look of the car could be different from how cars are being made now, based on sleeker lines and Apple's ability to design awesome looking products. One thing is for certain, when the day comes, the Apple car offers the potential to be as game changing for Apple as the iPhone was in 27. Watch this space. Now, Wiser is funded primarily from three sources, subscriptions, donations from Buy Me A Coffee or by promotions. These are affiliate links and this week I'm going to quickly mention the app that I use for my Twitter threads. It's called Typefully. I use Typefully every day for writing and scheduling tweets. It's a super easy tool to use that runs as a native app or via a web page. This video accompanies an article that was written for the Wiser Insights series, which is exclusive content for paying subscribers to the Wiser newsletter. If you're interested in signing up, head over to my website, the URL is here, and subscribe. You can join for free and then you get a weekly newsletter with all the latest insights and information and quality content about what is going on in the technology economy. That's all for this week. Thanks very much for listening. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up and remember to hop over to the website, check out the newsletter and all of the content that is on the website and, join, and sign up so you never miss an issue. Thanks very much for listening. And remember, insight and information gives you leverage. Thanks for listening.